Greetings in the Lord Jesus Christ. We're excited what God is doing right here at the Pax Revival Center Church. Wow, we had a great camp meeting. People's lives were changed, and I'm excited what God has done. And today, right here at the Pax Revival Center Church, that spirit is going to flow over. So make sure you're with us this morning. Uh, three great services today. Early worship at 10, 11 a.m., and 6 p.m. revival service. We're excited what God is doing. You need prayer? Phone numbers on the screen right now. Call those numbers. We're excited what God is doing. Take you into a live testimony of what God has already done at this time. And it's the one you prayed for last Sunday. She wasn't eating. Now she's eating. She was 10 pounds. You know, yeah, so you know, last Sunday I, I I prayed for her and this baby was not eating. No. And it's eating now? Yes. What did I tell you last week? That you're gonna eat. She's gonna eat. Yes. How they, and you're so was you a caretaker? Yes. Father, and I thank God for people like this that are caretakers. I thank God for foster parents. I thank God that people take children that are abused and thrown away like trash and will love on them. Take care of them as if they're their own. Thank God you had a good mom and daddy didn't throw you away. But we live in a society today where parents don't love their children. But thank God for mamas and thank God for grannies and, and thank God for family members that will take up. Father, we just cover these little ones today. I love the word of God and every Wednesday night I have more time just to settle down and pour myself into you. I love studying the Word. I've loved preaching the Word. And on every Wednesday night, the Word of God just explodes. It's probably one of the most powerful services of all week long. Make your plans to be with us Wednesday night at 7.30. God's got a word for you. I invite you to be with us every Friday morning at 10.30. Miracles are taking place. I want to pray for you. I have time to prophesy, minister to you. Be with me every Friday morning at 10.30 where God is doing some awesome things. Oh, you know, this little baby was brought here, here to the church and had not been eating and would not eat. And the caretakers had, had been taking care of it and had, had been through a terrible situation. We prayed for it. And the next week, come back and said, that baby started eating. It and God good. You want to be with us this morning at 11 a.m.? God's going to do great things. Into you, you the preaching of God's word at this tonight. time. It's going to be an awesome service Wednesday night. Holly of Friday morning, and I, I'm just telling you all the and winter camp meetings coming in a hurry. If you have your Bible, stand with me. I, I know you, I, I know you've been standing for a while today, and and especially all of you that work out uh, uh, on Friday night. I agree, my bones are hurting too. Hello, hello. I ain't never throw so many hamburgers and hot dogs and uh, and all that stuff. But I love ministering. I love I love serving people. Proverbs 30 verse 24. They be four things which are little upon the earth. But they are exceedingly wise. The ant are, are, uh, are a people not strong, yet they prepare their meat in the summer. The clony are but a feeble folks, yet they make their houses in the rocks. The locusts have no king, yet they go forth all of them by bands. The spider takes hold, someone says takes hold, with her hands and, in the, and, and that is in the king's palace. You may be seated. We have an ant, we have a clony, we have locusts, we have a spider. I would like to call them four little evangelists today. Four little evangelists that God used to employ a, 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 you know, some, a, a, you know, the gospel around the world. And, and it says here that, uh, you know, that you know, they're exceedingly wise of the ant or people are not strong folks, but they prepare for the summer. The rock bachelor or the clonies are a feeble folks, but they make their homes in the cliffs. The locusts have no kings, but yet they advance by, by unity and by ranking. So, and, and the spider is so, is, is so skillful to hold on with her hands. The very first one I want to talk about is found in verse 25 is the measures of the ants are not a strong people, but they prepare for the future. If I had time, I'd stop right there and preach a sermon and make this a four part sermon that we need to prepare for our future. Some people are looking as if they're living forever, but they're not prepared for their future. 
they're not really deciding who am I going to serve and what I'm going to serve and what am I going to do in the future. Oh, but we're concerned about our future because we make sure we have our 401 uh, uh, or, or you may, we'll make sure we have a 401k. We make sure that we, uh, you know, that we have our, uh, our insurance and we make sure we have retirement and we make sure of all the things. So we're concerned about the physical things, but are we concerned about our spiritual life? Where are we going to spend eternity at? Uh, so therefore, I'm making sure that I'm going to be like the little ant and I'm going to prepare where I'm going to spend eternity. The second one found in verse 26, the clonies are but a feeble folks, yet they make their houses in the rocks. They, you know, they know where their foundation is. If there's ever been a time that America needs to know where their foundation is, it is the day. The clony was just a, a, was a, you know, it was a small little, uh, you know, was, was an animal that was feeble, but yet he found out there's a strength in running to the rock. See, I'm going to be one of those that run to the rock. I've been out in the Rocky Mountains, and, and I see all these little mild-looking animals, and how do they see people that go running to the rock, and, and they crawl down in a hole. Some of you this morning, you need to get back to the rock you used to stand on. You used to stand on Christ. And the third one is found in verse 27, and it talks about you know, the locusts. The locusts, you know, they don't have a king. They don't have somebody say, I'm in charge and you in charge. But yet they all get together in unity. Oh, this is, I, I really need to preach this one here right now for America. That we all need to get together in unity. It's not about who's going to be president, but who is going to be God of our life. Who are we going to make Lord of our life? It's not who's going to be the next Congress and who's going to be the next Senate, but you know, you know, you know, that we're going to make God over our life and get together. But then the last one is the one that I talked about last week. The last one I talked about last week was the spider. The spider has got to the, uh, you know, the ability to hold on, in, 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 hold on to a little piece of string. I wish somebody would catch this this morning. Uh, a spider's got the ability to hold on. I know last week that I spent the whole week about the spider and the spider web. I talked about how important it was for us not to get caught in the spider web. The devil wants to keep you caught in the track of drugs, uh, alcohol, and rebelling in your life. How they, and the spider, how they, uh, you had the ability to, uh, you know, you to create the web. But today I want to talk about the, the spider itself. The spider that has the ability to hang on in the midst of situations has the ability to hang on. There is something about when things are going tough, you have the right and the ability to hang on. See, if I get somebody here, how the old, old spider would be up in the corner of the house, but the spider knows how to hang on. You could take that spider, and, which, and, and I used this last week, and, uh, and knock that spider down, but that old spider will get back up. And that spider said, I'm going to build me another nest because I want to stay in this house. I want to stay. I wish we had some church folks that would get to the place when the devil knocks you down. Be sure to know if I fall, I'm going to get back up. And the devil push you over. Begin to show, devil, you may push me over, but you're not keeping me down. I, I, I'm going to be worse than a spider. I'm going to get back up. I'm going to shake myself. I'm going to pick myself up because I know there's something for me to do. I, I'm going to hold on. There's a lesson that we can learn about this morning about holding on. I want you to look to somebody and say, hold on. Paul was in the boat on his way to Rome in the book of Acts chapter 27. Go with me there. Here he was on the way and in the middle of the storm. Now, I want you to realize this. Paul's anointed man. Paul was chosen by God, but yet it was in the middle of a storm. Sometimes you think, well, I get in a storm, God don't love me. Oh, no, he's trust, he, he, he wants to see who you're going to trust. He wants to see how you're going to react when you're in the middle of the storm. So the Bible said, for many days the wind blew, the sun and moon and stars were hid. The wind began to wash the boat of, of which over, and the, and the sea began to push it from one side to another. They begin to fast and they begin to pray and they begin to cry out to God, but the storm still raged. Sometimes in the middle of life, you've been praying, you've been seeking God, but you just got to keep on holding on. You got to just keep on holding on. Every one of their lives was in, it was in jeopardy. Hear what it said in chapter 27, it was in verse 23. And there stood by me a night the angel of God who I serve. 
saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought to Caesar. Uh, and, and lo, God has given all of them that sell with thee. Therefore, sirs, be of good cheers, for I believe God as it was spoken unto me. The Amplified Bible says it like this, For this very night there stood by me an angel of God in whom I belong and whom I serve and worship. And he said, Don't be frightened, Paul. It is a necessity that you stand before Caesar. And, beho uh, and behold, God has given all of those that will sell with you. So keep up your courage and have faith, completely confident in God, and that he will do exactly what he told you he was going to do. So there are some things that you know, Paul learned about holding on. Very first thing that he found out in verse number 23, that he said, uh, he said, I know the God who I serve. I just want to stop just a little bit and, and that we need to realize who it is that we serve. See, because he realized who it was that, you know, and, you know, that he belonged to. He began to say, I, I know that I belong to God. He, he said in verse 23, I know that I belong to God. And there's one thing that I know this morning. There's some things I may not know, but I know that I belong to God. There's, there's some things that I may not know, but I know I'm saved and redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. And I know that I'm bought, bought with the price of the blood of Jesus Christ, and I belong to God. There's some things that I may not know in life. I, I, I don't have all the education of, of, that everybody else has. And I can't answer all the questions in life, but there's one thing that I know. Jesus died on the cross, and on the third day he rose again. And I believe that he is Lord of my life, and I accept him. So therefore, I know that. I belong to God Romans chapter 8 and verse 35 he said who shall separate us from this love he says shall suffering shall uh, afflictions tribulations calamities shall distress persecution and hunger shall all of the prayers from the swords even as is written that we are forsaken all the day long and yet regard ourselves as sheep to the slaughter and yes in the middle of all of this I am persuaded that nothing shall separate me from the love of God. I'm separate. I'm not letting enough trouble. I'm not letting people. I'm not letting fear. I'm not letting government. I'm not letting job. I'm not letting bad doctors report. I'm not letting a lawyer report. I, I don't feel good. I, you know, because there's some days that you'll get up and you don't feel saved. Now some of y'all say righteous folks. You may feel like you're saved and filled with the Holy Ghost every day. But there's some days you have to get up and remind yourself. That I am a citizen of heaven. I've been washed with the blood of Jesus Christ. And devil, you have no place in me. Devil, you have no place in my family. Well, just because you're trying to make me go by feelings, I'm not going by feelings. I'm not going by sight. But I'm going by the faith that I have in Jesus Christ that I know that he died for me regardless of the mistakes that I've ever made in my past. The second one is found in verse number 23. And whenever he says, and there stood by me this night uh, uh, the angel of God and whom I serve. So therefore, Paul understood. I'm on a battle. I'm, I'm on a ship and it's been battered. My life has been battered. I'm going through some storms in my life. But I know that God put me on this ship and he ain't finished with me yet. He ain't finished with me yet. Some of you need to know you've been called. See, if you don't know you've been called by God, the devil will steal your future. Oh, well, Pastor, what you mean? Uh, well, you may not be able to call to play or to sing like someone else does, but you've been called to do something. And if you don't know that you was called to do something, the devil will lie to you and tell you that God don't even know who you are. You may be just be called, uh, uh, you're called to open the door. You may be just called to uh, you know, you know, encourage somebody. You may just be called about little, but you've been called to do something for the kingdom of God. And hallelujah, this is where Paul said, I know who I serve. I am convinced who I am serve. Therefore, when trouble comes, I realize that I'm still a child of God. Because he called me out of darkness into a marvelous light. So when you feel like quitting, I go back to my mind and think, Jesus didn't quit when he was on the cross. And if we're going to be Christ-like, we got to have the, uh, the ability to say, I got to finish this job because Jesus finished his job. He didn't lose his faith. I am not going to lose my faith. So I know who I serve, and I'm willing to do anything that I have to for the one that I serve. Verse number 24, and he says, uh, you hear what he said, verse 24, saying, fear not. The angel said, fear not. 
I will tell you any time that God says, you've heard me say this again, any time God's word says, fear not, get ready. He's about to require something out of you that's going to cause some faith because fear is going to come in. He said, Thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God has given all of you, all of them that with you. So Paul said, I trust in the promises of God. So in the midst of the storm, I really wish I had a boat. I'd get in the boat and rock it back and forth and say, Paul was in the midst of the storm. Paul was in the midst of the storm, trouble on every side, but he still said, I believe God. You've gone through doctor's reports, but you still believe in God. You're going through lawyer report. You're going through financial situations, but you're saying, I still believe God. I still believe God that God is able to do exactly what he said he was going to do. So therefore, I'm not going to quit because all I need to get through this storm that I'm going through is a promise from God. And if I got a word from God, I'm going to make it through this storm. If I got a word from God, I'm going to make it through this trial. If I got a word from God, my kids are going to make it through this storm. If I got a word from God, and all Paul had was a word from God. All you need is one word from God. He told Peter, he, Peter, you can walk, just come. He gave him a word. If you got a word about your marriage, you got a word, you hold on. Well, pastor, I'm not too sure. If I got a word, I'm not too sure. Well, there's 32,000 words in the Bible. You find where he said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I was wounded that you may be healed. I was bruised. I've been through storms so that I could bring you up. So whenever you really Realize who you are, Jesus Christ. He says, I know who I'm served. I know who I belong to. And I'm going to be faithful. He said, if you'll be faithful over a few things, i make you ruler over many things. So let's have faith in him. And so we have the promises of God's word. Now, here they were. They were in the middle of the storms, and they had a promise. The promise was that God said, I, I will never leave you. And the promise was that uh, you... you would you take and would you throw out the four anchors? You do everything you can do and then follow what I tell you to do. Now, see, the confusion part of this story is God told Paul to stay on the boat and it fell apart. This word's right here is for somebody. You've done everything that God told you to do and it didn't work out. You've done everything that God said to do and it didn't work out. Paul done what God told him to do, stay on the ship. Everybody in the ship, which some people would have argued and said, well, if that would have been God, y'all heard him. If that would have been God, the boat wouldn't have fell apart, Paul. That must not have been God. You should have compromised the further back. You should have got off of the boat. You should have done something, and you should have done something. You, but Paul said, I'm doing what God said I'm going to do because faith is a step at a time. Faith is a step at a time. I don't know what this next, uh, I don't know what tomorrow holds, but I know who holds tomorrow. I, I know if I, if I walk out on this, that God's going to take care of me. I know if I take that next step, that God's going to heal my body. I, I know if I take the next step, I, whenever, I, well, pastor, I wish God show me. And if he showed you everything, it wouldn't take faith. If he told you everything, it wouldn't take faith. But faith is the substance of things hoped for and evidence of things not seen. And by it, by what? The elders obtain a good report. Do you want a good report? You've got to believe the word of God. You've got to believe and you've got to know who you serve. You've got to know that you belong to him and that he's on your side. And verse number 25, and when you hear what he said in verse number 25. And he said, verse 25, therefore, sir, be a good cheer. I believe God. So the secret of getting through this storm in holding on is believing God he says he said keep your courage keep your faith up. Uh, and not only do you have the Word of God but you got to believe the Word of God I see you know, some people hear the Word of God but they don't believe the Word of God they see the Word of God but they don't they go around and quote the Word of God but really don't believe the Word of God but it's time in these dark moments that we're living in it's to believe God in spite of what you're going on in your life in spite of what the doctor says in spite of what your family says in spite of uh, the relationship problems I believe that God is gonna work it all out every single week I get testimonies back where people believe God for the foolish things the impossible things and God turned it around you know there was people that this past week got houses that ain't got no credit people got cars 
ain't got no credit. But got a word from God, everything's going to be all right. People got jobs this week. Your brother Buck was telling me about his son got a crazy job. I ain't telling you how much you would be running him down, want to borrow some money from him. How did some crazy type of money? I'm talking about crazy big type of money. How do you, you know, it take care of four or five family kind of money? How did just walked in? How do you, and when he walked in, he didn't even have to uh, 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 really apply it. Boom, it was there. It, it was there. It was there that God gave it to him. It was there. See, when you get in place with God, that God, I trust you. When I don't understand you, I trust you. I'm on this boat, and I, I'm going to ride this a little bit, and I want you all to help me a little bit. I'm on this boat, and the boat's falling apart. But God told them, every single one of them to stay in the boat. Cut off the, all of the lifeboats. Cut off everything else that you, would, that you would have substitute other than God. You cut off every other thing except God. See, church, I've just come by this morning to tell you, if you got a substitute, God will stand back to watch your substitute fall apart. If you got a backup plan, God will stand back long enough till your backup plan falls. Why? Your trust has to be fully, 100% in God. When I was a little boy coming up, my daddy and my grandpa used to say, Son, jump off of the porch. I'll catch you. You know, the first couple of times I got to the edge, and I done like this. I done like this. Go ahead, son. I got you. Finally, when I got up enough of faith and confidence in my grandpa, I would ease off, not jump, but I would just fall into his hands. He said, now, son, do it again. Pretty soon it got to the place that I would get way back, and I would run as hard as I could, and he would catch me. Why? He showed me through confidence that he was able to hold me. He showed me through confidence that he would not let me down. He showed me through confidence that he helped me through the storm. And some of you need to understand and go back and, re and stop and think about in your mind, how many times did God catch you? How many times did God hold you? How many times you thought it was all over with and it was not over with, but God kept you in the middle of the storm you was going through? How many times did you think it is over with, but I come to tell you the, the devil this morning, I'm holding on. I'm holding on. I'm holding on because I know my best is still yet to come. Yet it tarries. I'm, I'm holding on. Oh, uh, See, there used to be an old church that talked about hold on and I, which I've given this illustration before when we were in China and we were smuggling the Bibles into China and we was going up the Yangtze River and we was going up into the jungle part. I, I never even knew that China had a jungle until I went on this, uh, on this mission trip and we were smuggling Bibles and tracks way up into the mountain areas. And we got to a place that, uh, you know, that, you know, that you had to get in these little flat bottom boats because you go through sand, the sandbars and they would have to pull you across it. And we were standing there, and there was a, a pastor, uh, Pastor Jones from the Bronx. He was a tall gentleman, and he was, a, uh, he was so, uh, he didn't say a whole lot, but his, but his roots went very deep. And he, he, he was standing there, uh, and, and as he would stand there, you know, the sign said it was supposed to be, I forget the number, it was $10 a person. We was Americans, tingling, tingling, tingling. So they said it was on like 40 or $50 a person. So Brother Jones, he stood up there and he said, Children, children, we serve a big God. You just stand here and wait. Now all those little Chinese folks, yang, 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 whatever they was doing, they was upset because we wouldn't get on the boat. And he said, Children, just hold on just a little bit longer. Hold on just a little bit longer. Those little Chinese men and women been running around and making all kind of fussing. And I guess they were talking about my mom and my aunt and cousin and all of them. I don't know what they were saying. But they were mad. They were mad that we wouldn't get on the boat. And your, your brother Jones, after about 30 minutes, he said, Children, don't get in despair and give more. The devil wants to take your money. The devil wants to take your money. You, we ain't paying more than we're supposed to be paying. Hold on, children. And he get a little emotional and get a little shouting going on. And hold on, children. And all the Chinese folks begin to look at him like, what in the world is this, you know, this tall back brother doing? Uh, uh, they just didn't know how much power that he had. He said, hold on. And finally, one of the little Chinese boys runs up there and hollers something to the, the translator. He said, 
They said, go, go ahead and get on, and you can get on for the right price. Uh, and your brother Jones said, thank you, Lord. Uh, oh, this is what happens when we hold on. So, Pastor, you don't understand uh, what it means. Uh, oh, well, you don't know. I know what it is to hold on. Uh, I know what it is to hold on until my children come back home, and they had not been at home. I know what it is to hold on for the doctor to come in and give me a good report on my baby, a good report on my wife. I, I know what it is to hold on for God to give me an increase. I, I know what it is to hold on. I, I'm just telling you, you need to be just like that spider. You need to learn how to hold on when you ain't got nothing but a little thread to hold on to. You hold on because God is going to see you through. You're the spider. Oh, I know we have a lot of web up here, but I watch spiders hold on. That spider would just swing over. Oh, we're excited what God is doing right here at the Pax Revival Center Church. Don't miss the three services today, 10, 11, and 6 p.m. tonight, right here at the Pax Revival Center Church. If you want to have more information, Pax Revival Center, just go to paxandrevivalcenter.com. How do you get more information? Until we see you in this great service today, may God bless you and use our prayer.